All right, here we go. Reggie Wright Jr., welcome back. Oh, thanks for having me back, Black. No doubt, man. We shook things up last time. <laughs> you know, let's, uh, let's talk about some more stuff this time. Cool. So, you know, I want to talk about, I want to start out with Compton a little bit. Okay. And kind of the backstory. Most people these days think of Compton as an African-American city. But it didn't start out that way, did it? No, not at all. Um, like I said, uh, uh, you know, George W. Bush uh, went to Compton College, Compton Community College. Uh, he did something in the summer, uh, a little intern, and he stayed in the Santa Fe Gardens. But we're talking about the 50s or the 60s. Um, but my parents, like I said on the first interview, I believe, uh, my parents bought a home in 72 there. And it was probably 50% uh, black and white at, at that time. Well, a little bit of Mexicans, um, I'm sure, had a small percentage. But now the demographic is, woo. So woo. what exactly happened? What, what caused all the white people to start leaving Compton? <laughs> well, white folks, I mean, white people, white young kids say the black folks. <laughs> but just the, the, the demographic, you know, all of us was moving, all of our parents were moving from Watts, the, the projects, the housing projects, you know, the Jordan Downs, the Pueblos, the... Uh, Imperial Courts, um, uh, what's some other ones over there? But you know, the, the different housing projects that, that's in Watts. And they were starting to make a little money, had little jobs, making $30,000 a year, whatever. And they were starting to buy homes. I remember my parents bought their home in, um, in 72 for $28,000. And then, so now you had homes in Cerritos and Bellflower that were starting to sell for like 50000 or whatever. And so white people just moving into uh, you know, a little nicer areas. And back then, you're talking about, you know, the 60s, early 70s, there were no gangs. No, no, no. The yeah. gangs, they, they were kind of starting the crib. They were really crews, the Crenshaws and stuff like that. Um, and you have to go to my boy Street TV, uh, Alex Alonzo, to get the history on that, or our podcast. Matter of fact, we just did a show on uh, a podcast that Alex uh, Alonzo from Street TV Gangs and, and myself and Mob James do every Wednesday mm -hmm. on a podcast. And we just talked about the history of, of when the Crips started and then later on when the blood started and the pyro. So on one of the episodes, we did a whole series on that. Okay. And, and back then, you know, you had two family homes. You oh, had yeah. the mother and the father, the whole single family, mother raising the kids. That, that wasn't around back then. Well, that started in. Well, the people that was fortunate enough to move to Compton did. Yeah. And unfortunately, you still have some people in the uh, still living in the housing, the, the you know the housing uh, the projects mm -hmm. that you know some of my friends um, was raised mainly by a single family, which was generally the mother. Okay, I mean the Crips didn't start in Compton. The Crips started in L.A. L.A. Yes. How did it start to creep over into Compton? Hmm. Uh, I'm not an expert on that, okay. uh, but I swear we just did an episode on that on Gangster Chronicles on our podcast, and um, they they explained that. Mob James and um, and Alex got real deep into that about how that started. Okay, and were there Mexicans in Compton during that time? There was some, um, for lack of coming off as being prejudiced, they were mainly the uh, the worker types, mm -hmm. you know the. Um, we call them border butlers now or something like that. That type of, you know, family, hard, hard working family, yeah, but not. Blue collar family. Yeah, blue collar family, yeah. Okay. And were there Mexican, Mexican gangs around that time or not really? Well, you know, you had the zoo suits and all of that, if you know the history of that. Yeah. Um, but I don't think they really started uniting. Uh, but I'm no historian on gangs, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> okay. But at one point, the gang situation started to, to get bigger. I mean, when you were a kid, was it already in full swing? Uh, I started noticing it. It wasn't like the drive-by shootings and stuff like that. But when I was a kid, that would be the mid-70s to the late-70s. And so um, we saw the Parus and, and the Crips fighting a little bit, but they were mainly fighting. You didn't have this drive-by shooting and this, this sh shoot em up stuff like, you know, like we know of today. It mainly just fights in your yard where four or five guys was jumping, you know, a dude from another set that, you know, was wearing blue or something like that. That's, that's all you saw for the most part. 